How we going? This is Fox back again for Sound Design Tutorials. I'm going to be showing you another patch from our Serum Soundbank EDM Essentials today. This is by far the start of the leads. Um, it's called Lead 9 in here, but I renamed it. I can't remember which one it is. But yeah, anyway, uh, I'm going to play it in context of the demo quick so you can hear it. You'll, you'll tell which sound it is straight away. It's a powerful lead. <laughs> There you have it, really, really powerful, versatile lead. You can pretty much use it for loads of genres. Dub Quite a gritty sort of drum and bass one if you pay it lower down. Really sings if you play it higher up. Awesome lead, really, really pleased with this. As I say, it's by far the best one I made uh, out of this sound pack. So yeah, I'm going to show you how I made it. Um, I'll just say quickly, if um, you want to buy this EDM sound pack I'm on that I made in Serum, there'll be a link in the description that will take you straight to ADSL's website where you can buy it from there. Uh, <clears throat> also, if you enjoy this or any of my other videos, make sure you subscribe. It's uh, youtube.com forward slash MrNFox22. Again, there'll be a link in the description. I'll put one up here in the top left corner as well that you can just click on. So, yeah, let's get on with it then. So I'm going to go ahead and change scenes for you so it's all a bit clearer. Make sure everything's working. Yep. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and initialize this. Start off with a saw wave. Every time you init a patch inside Serum, that's what you get. <clears throat> and what we want, they're both pulse width mod waveforms now in the digital section. Analog, sorry. The first one we want is PWNMG, which I take it as a copy of one of the Moog or Moog, whichever it depends which country you're from. So yeah, this one we want to pitch it down one octave from its original starting point. Wave table position, we want it pretty much dead center, so it's a, a wider rather than a thinner pulse. And that is it, all I did for that oscillator. It's a real simple patch in regards to setting the oscillators up and the filter and stuff like that. The real grit and the depth of the sound comes from the effects, mainly the distortion. So yeah, oscillator B, click it, make sure it's turned on. This one is an analog waveform as well. It's another P PWM one, and it's the Mini. Take it, this comes from the Mini Moog, Mini Moog or Mini Moog, whatever you want. Um, this one, pitch it down one octave as well. So yeah. Real straightforward, that's it. I just opened up the wavetable position again just to make this one a little bit not so narrow. Quite tempting to modulate the uh, wavetable position to give it that pulse width mod sound, but I didn't on this one. So yeah, the sub oscillator, we clicked it, turned it on as well. This one is set to a thin pulse as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Keep this one on octave zero so it's an octave higher. So we'll set up the main amp envelope now. Um, the attack, you want to back it off slightly. Keep the hold where it is. It's okay where it is, just pull the sustain down. It's pretty much dead center. Just so you get a bit of a pluck at the start of the sounds. <coughs> um, this is a lead. I didn't want it, or I didn't design it to be a polyphonic lead, so I made it mono. Hence, I've only used one voice in each of the oscillators. Still a real big, powerful sound nonetheless. Um, I didn't use any more envelopes to do any modulation. Any other modulation I did do was with an LFO. 
But first, we're going to go ahead and set the filter up. <coughs> Excuse me. Click the filter, turn it on. A, B, and the sub one are all going to the filter. Push it around. Oh, bear with me. Joking to death. <coughs> yeah, A, B, and the sub all go into the filter. Uh, keep it on the MG low 12. Open our out. So it's pretty much passing all the way through. We're going to put an LFO on this to give it a bit of modulation later on. Drive it a bit. So yeah, two LFOs actually. LFO 1. We'll do LFO2 first because that's modulating something on this page. Um, this was a triangle wave which it comes on as standard. I set it in mode to trigger which means it's going to restart every time you press a new key on your keyboard or a new MIDI note triggers it. Um, uh, I had the rate set to one bar so it's quite slow. Um, make sure the BPM anchor and the dot is selected. I'm going to use this to modulate the phase of oscillator B. Pull the phase down to zero, then push it all the way to maximum. Why is that not showing all the way around? <coughs> How strange. You can hear what it's doing, it's give us a slight bit of movement that does. Uh, LFO 1 modulates two destinations, <coughs> modulates the master tune and the filter cutoff. So LFO 1, this one is a triangle wave as well, set it to trigger again, BPM and anchored, the rate 1 over 8, so quite quick, drag this, drop it on the cutoff, positive. You can hear it just like fizzing up and down at the high end of the sound. Um, it also modulates the master tune. <coughs> that was to give it a bit of LFO. Um, you have to do that in the matrix section. So choose LFO 1. Choose master tune. Global master tune. Set it. Click on that so it just, the arrow is just going to the right. So it's unipolar. And the, the amount I had, it was only a tiny amount. I believe it's just plus one. And we only want to be able to hear this by if the mob wheel is going to bring it in. So this is what you want in the AUX source. Choose mod wheel. And what that does is the LFO is already set to the master tune, pitching it up and down by one semitone. But the mob wheel is like the mix for it. So you're only going to hear it if you push the mob wheel in. I'll show you. So when the mod feels what when the mod wheel is wide open, you can hear the uh, tremolo effect. It's not a very fast one rate one over eight, but it worked well with this patch and also how I had it in the demo song. I've actually got that. Um, I can show you quick. I've got the mod wheel mapped with some modulation inside the bit wig. <coughs> you can see in this MIDI clip these curves are where the mod wheel's coming in and out. In and out. So you can just hear the tremolo coming in when these peaks are at their highest. Neat little trick. Bring everything back on point. Sorry about that. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the modulations. Um, yeah, that was it. There's nothing nice and straightforward to say. It's just the effects now that are going to totally change what this sounds like. 
So yeah, into the effects section. Uh, the distortion is what does it mainly, but I'm going to set everything else up first. So we'll go to the delay, click that, turn it on, pull that to the top. We want the distortion above that. And we want reverb and then a compressor. But yeah, for the delay, um, I had it set to BPM mode. The feedback was where it comes as standard. Rate left was 1 over 8. Right was 1 over 16. So quite quick on the right hand side. I moved the EQ down slightly. So it was just cutting some off the top. And uh, the mix where it comes as standard. It's without and with. Real good quality effects are inside here, and this delay is really, really good. Um, not as many controls as some delays you get inside some soft synths or even the delays inside doors, but still good nonetheless. So yeah, the reverb, we're going to bring that in now as well. Turn it on, it was quite big. 40% pre-delay. What's controlling that? Macro one, okay. <coughs> so pre-delay, low cut. Damping, high cut, width, everything now it comes as standard. I just boosted the size a bit. Um, the how I did this, um, I like the sound without the reverb, but I thought it, some people are going to want a nice reverb on a lead like this, so I did it with macro one. So I re relabeled this reverb. Click and drag this crosshair onto the mix for the reverb, and I did it positive about a third of the way around, about 25. So it wasn't too overpowering, but you can use it as and when it feels like. So yeah, now this macro knob down here controls the amount of reverb. I mean, the way we've got the delay set up with quite a fast reverb, and uh, it, it almost sat not quite a fast reverb, quite a fast delay on the right side. It's almost giving it a little bit of a reverby effect anyway. But yeah, there it is, the reverb's there if you want it. The compressor was just to hone it all in. Um, I literally just turned it on and boosted the gain slightly to about 6.7 dB. <coughs> So yeah, still didn't sound like we had it at the start. This is it now, the distortion. This totally changes it. It was quite a real severe one. It was one of the ones later on, this Seinfeld one. Um, the EQ I set to pre. I stretched it out to about 7,000 hertz, and the Q was about 0.1. Something like that. So we're just cutting the real highs off and sort of mainly aiming it at the mids. The drive was where it comes as standard, and then quite heavy on the mix as well, around about 60-70%. So I'll show you without the distortion. And with. Just gave it a little bit of release on the uh, main amp envelope. Look, if I pull this down to dead zero, you're going to hear it clicking when it restarts. There you have it. Power lead. Definitely best lead out of the pack, as I said. So yeah, we're gonna play it in context with everything else again. I'll do the build up to it as well so you can hear it.
there you go anyway um that's that patch done anyway as i said at the beginning there's a link in the description uh, to adsr website where you can go ahead and buy this it's only 18 us dollars so still you get 92 patches everything you see in this library here there's 28 bases i think 24 bases something like 20 leads 20 pads 20 plucks a couple of gated pads and uh, some effects but yeah for now that's it thanks for watching